Welcome back everyone, Patrick here, and moving on to the next question, we have to explain in detail why each of these functions here are continuous at the given x value. And when they say in detail, what I'm going to do is go through the three conditions for a function to be continuous at an x value of a. Remember that the limit as x approaches a of f of x has to exist, f of a has to be defined, and then one and two, both of those things have to equal. And then the function's continuous at that x value base. So I'm gonna go through those conditions for each of these. So number one, we got f of x equals x squared minus one in brackets to the power of three at x is equal to two. So the first condition is we have to show that the limit as x approaches two of x squared minus one to the power of three exists. Now, you may think to yourself, you could just directly substitute two here. So you'd have two squared, which is four minus one is three, and then three to the power of three is 27. But what I'm going to do is actually use property of limits to show this. So sometimes your prof may want you to show more work. Some profs may let you get away with just directly substituting, which is fine then, but a lot of profs want to see the work of how you work through the properties of limits to show that that limit exists, and that's what I'm gonna do. And uh, we've gone through properties of limits questions before in previous videos, so when I'm doing these limits here, I'm under the assumption that you already went through those videos. So here, Notice that the outer function is to the power of three. So what we can do first is change this to read limit as x approaches two of x squared minus one, and then all of that is gonna be to the power of three. And then notice that we're subtracting two things here. So next, we would distribute that limit to both of these. and that would be to the power of three. And then notice that this limit here, same thing as up here, it's a function to the power of two, so we can just rewrite limit as x approaches two of x, and then that will be to the power of two, minus the limit as x approaches two of a constant, that's always just gonna be equal to that constant. And we're gonna have to the power of three, and then notice here, limit as x approaches two of x, that's just gonna equal that x, that x value that we're approaching. So it's two in this case. That's gonna be to the power of two minus one to the power of three. So you would end up getting three to the power of three, which gives us 27. So that's gonna be this limit. So that's number one. We proved that the limit exists and it equals 27. Now, condition number two, we have to figure out what's f of two gonna be. So if we plug in two over here, two squared minus one to the power of three, notice we would get 27 as well. And so because this limit is equal to f of two, that third condition holds as well, which proves that this function at that x value of two is continuous. So going through this process, I know it may seem a little bit silly because we know that x squared minus one to the power of three is gonna be continuous for all x values. The domain of it is x er, and so it's pretty obvious that it's going to be continuous at this x value of two. But unfortunately, sometimes you have to actually show it in more detail, and uh, this is a way of doing that, of going through those three conditions. Right, so that's number one. Now number two, we got um, f of x equals the square root of one minus three x plus two at an x value of negative five. So first thing we gotta do, first condition, show that the limit as x approaches negative five of the square root of one minus three x plus two exists. And so we're gonna use the properties of limits here. Notice that we're adding two expressions. So 
we can rewrite this as limit as x approaches negative 5 of the square root of 1 minus 3x plus the limit as x approaches negative 5 of 2. <clears throat> Notice here we can distribute that limit inside the square root. This is also like 1 minus 3x to the power of 1 half. So we could distribute that into the exponent as well if you want to change it to an exponent. So I'm just going to keep the square root there and just write limit as x approaches negative 5 of 1 minus 3x plus this here is the limit as x approaches negative 5 of constant is just equal to that constant. But I'm actually going to leave it this time until the very end when we plug in for everything. Then notice here this limit, we got two expressions that we're subtracting. So under the square root, we could say the limit as x approaches negative 5 of 1 minus the limit as x approaches negative 5 of 3x plus the limit as x approaches negative 5 of 2. And then over here with this limit, notice we could take out that constant. So we'd have the square root limit as x approaches negative 5 of 1, that's just a constant there, so let's leave it like that, minus 3 times the limit as x approaches negative 5 of x, plus the limit as x approaches negative 5 of 2. And then from here, we could sub in everything. So notice limit as x approaches negative 5 of 1, that's just equal to 1 minus 3 times the limit as x approaches negative 5 of x, that's going to be just negative 5, plus the limit as x approaches negative 5 of 2 of a constant, it's just equal to that constant. And notice here we'll have negative 3 times negative 5, which is positive 15, plus 1 is 16, square root of 16 is 4, plus 2 gives us 6. Right, so this limit here is equal to 6, and we showed that with the properties of limits. Second step, we got to show f of a is defined, so we got to show what is f of negative 5, and if we plug in negative 5 for the x value in the function, we'll have the square root of 1 minus 3 times negative 5 plus 2, and that's the same as down here, right? which, it, you, which uh, it pretty much will always be the same, right? It's just a longer form of doing the algebra. So we'll end up with 16 here. Square root of 16 is 4, plus 2 gives us 6. So notice that this limit is equal to f of negative 5, which means the third condition holds, which means that this function is continuous at that x value of negative 5. And then finally, number three, we got f of x equals x plus 5 over 1 plus x all in brackets to the power of 3 at an x value of 3. So first thing we got to do is show that the limit as x approaches 3 of this function here, x plus 5 over 1 plus x to the power of 3, exists. So let's go through the properties of limits. Notice we have a function to the power of 3, so we can rewrite this as um, x plus 5 over 1 plus x, and then all of this is going to go in brackets to the power of 3. And then notice we have a rational function there, so the next step would be distributing that limit to the numerator and distributing that limit to the uh, denominator. Then notice we're adding two things in the numerator. So next step would be distributing that limit to both of those things. And then same thing in the denominator. So we've got the limit as x approaches 3 of 1 plus the limit as x approaches 3 of x, that's still all going to be to the power of 3. 
and then notice that we have everything in the two formats that we want. If you remember from the properties of limits, we want it in the format limit as x approaches a of x or the limit as x approaches a of a constant. And notice all of these are in that format. So limit as x approaches 3 of x, that's just equal to 3. The limit as x approaches 3 of a constant, it's just equal to that constant. Uh, limit as x approaches 3 of a constant, equal to the constant. And then limit as x approaches 3 of x, that's just equal to 3. And this is still going to be all to the power of 3. So in the bracket, we would end up with 8 over 4 to the power of 3, which is 2 to the power of 3, which gives us 8. So that's what this limit is equal to. We showed that it exists and it's also equal to that. And then finally, what we got to do is figure out what's f of three. Um, so we would just plug in three for the x values to the power of three and notice that we're exactly where we were here. So it's going to end up equaling eight as well. Right, and because this limit is equal to f of 3, both of them equal, third condition holds, which means that the function is continuous at that x value of 3. So again, like I mentioned, I know it's kind of silly to do it this way, where you know that a function is continuous at that x value, usually with just a direct substitution. But if they want you to explain in detail using this definition, of continuity, that's how you do that, and you do these limits with the properties of limits. So it's also good practice for those property of limits type of questions.